figure out who's gonna do what in the process here. We've got the killing, the scalding, the spinning, eviscerating. We've got separating the livers, uh, final clean, and then putting them in the chill tank. Um, so there's a lot of different parts. I'm sure we don't want to bottleneck it here and it probably will get bottlenecked here because we've got four killing cones. We've got a single scalder right now um, and a single spinner. So, um, Oh, it's fine. We can do the two by two method. We'll have two that come in. They'll have enough time to, because if we're keeping them in here for two minutes, mm -hmm. it'll leave them enough time to drain out. Drain out. Okay. It'll keep that. That only takes about 20 seconds. Okay. So we shouldn't have a bottleneck there. So if we do this right, so who's going to be doing the processing? As far as eviscerating? The actual. I can do that. Then and kind of go back and forth. Okay, and then who's gonna do like so? Dawson and I can handle this side. Okay. So. All right, and so we will work on maybe you do the final rinse. Yeah. And make sure that the, we're cleaning everything up real nice. Make sure all the feathers. Are... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the final clean with picking all the feathers and making sure it's ready for the chill tank. Um, we need to keep an eye on the temperature of the chill tank and the temperature of this scalder too. This is right. really important that we keep it at 130 because it will rip the skin when we put it in the spinner, in the plucker, um, if, it's not a, if it's not a soft scald. Um, Dawson is being careful with the chickens here. He doesn't want to stress them out too much, so he's holding them like this um, versus gr just grabbing them and hanging them upside down that stresses them out and it causes the muscles to tense. and. There's more chances of broken wings if the chickens are not relaxed, and that little guy looks he looks pretty relaxed. Yeah. And we aren't we aren't going to be showing the actual killing today. Um, we can go into detail if you have questions. You can comment or or send us a private message, and we can go into details on how to do that. But we're just not going to show that live today. Uh, but we will show the rest of the process. All the time so it takes a little bit to get in routine so let's just work in unity work quiet be patient with each other and we'll improve every time on our process for the next time so we're making notes back here keep notes in your head afterwards we'll go over all that so that we can make our process more efficient next time okay. i think we're ready all right dawson um start bringing them to me why don't you grab this while we're kind of getting it set up Okay. Um, and then uh, maybe you can, while we're getting it set up, why don't you talk about that over there? We'll get the first killing done, and then you can start as we move over to this side. All right, Dawson's bringing the next chicken, and girls, you wanna get your knives and go ahead and get these buckets right here. We need to fill these up. We need to put some ice in here to make sure that we can keep the livers cool because we do keep the livers. Uh, some people keep the gizzards as well. Um, we don't really find use for those. So we just, um, we just keep the, the livers. Um, sometimes some people will keep the gizzards. I guess you could use it for dog food or cat food. Um, it's just another process right now. We may get to that later right now. 
we're probably not going to keep them today, but we will show you if I actually remember, I'll show you a demonstration on how to keep them and how to clean out the gizzards as well. Okay, go ahead and get the ice. Yeah. Put the ice in there. And sometimes it kind of takes a while to get into a routine. It's not something we do every day. And that's the great thing about it, is it's not done every day. Um, it shouldn't be done every day. It's just part of the different seasons of homesteading. And uh, it kind of takes us a little bit to get back into it at the start of the season. Uh, the next group of chicks that we have coming in, they are going to be eight weeks apart from this. So we're two months removed from doing our next set of chicks and they will, it'll, it just gets a little bit smoother every time we, we do another set of chicks. Um, and it's fun. It's a neat process. You know, we always enjoy getting the little chicks in and uh you know it doesn't matter how many times we do this we we love seeing the little chicks and playing with them and getting to raise them and it definitely is a a connection to where your food comes from you know there's always a sad point in there that we hate to see them go after raising them but i'm really thankful that we're able to have meat i, I would buy meat in the store if i wasn't doing this myself because i love my family and i want to take care of them um so i'm i'm really glad uh, to be able to see exactly, I know exactly what I fed them. I know how much sun and grass they got. I know how much attention they got in their short little lives. And the, the sad thing about these chicks, the, these chicks are made to really only live about eight weeks anyway. Um, you know, on, on a big open field, they can actually live a lot longer, of course, but they definitely have a lot of breathing problems, even when they're cared for very well. Uh, you can tell they're just, they're bred to be very large. So, um, you know, there's always a struggle in there of that point where, you know, do we, you know, it's, it's never fun to raise an animal and then have to slaughter it. But, um, you know, that doesn't stop the fact that I'm, I'm going to eat meat and I'm going to feed my family poultry. Um, uh, and at least I know it was raised humanely and clean, um, and healthy. So it's just part of homesteading. Okay, it looks like we have some chicks coming in now to the scalder. And you wanna just, you wanna make sure that they're pushed down into the water all the way. Um, we're gonna sit there and do that for two minutes. Um, you can look at them as they're as they're in there um, the feathers will start coming loose and you can kind of after a while we'll be able to just barely tug and they'll come out need to grab these legs And we have this, you can see we have this other, so a turkey fryer, or 
Um, and you can either pull those out when you're done if you don't feel comfortable uh, pulling the chicken itself or just pull the chickens themselves. Uh, it's up to you. We've got it. We've got it this way so we can do either one uh, depending on who's working and how comfortable they feel with it. Um, just be careful. It is it is hot water. So if you stay in contact with it very long, you're you're going to get scalded as well. And we don't have feathers to be pulled. So the water right now is about 140. So I want to pull them out a little bit sooner than two minutes. Uh, we're about 30 seconds left. We'll go ahead and just do a test. And the feathers come out pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them out. So you kind of just let the water drain off real quick. And then we're going to bring them over to the plucker. So once they're in, you want to take your water hose and spray them down. easier but you can see that even still pulling on them they're they're easily coming out uh, there's not a lot of effort that's given to, to pulling those so I just kind of clean that up a little bit and then we'll go and and start doing the processing side of it the feet off and there is a joint in here I'll show you if you can get close enough here uh, there's kind of a joint across here that if you hit it just right it's pretty simple to just pull right off and as you can see that's about what it looks like when you buy it from the grocery store um, and it makes it really easy if you don't hit it it's kind of difficult so if it's too difficult keep keep moving your knife around till you find it Okay, next you're gonna do up here, this is the crop. Um, I like to take the crop out um, next, so I just make a, just a small cut. And this is the crop, this is where they store their food. Now these guys have been off food. Uh, we removed their food last night. It's the first time since we've had them that we've removed food. We keep food in their pen 24-7 and it, it seems to work the best for these this breed. Okay, that's the crop. And then come back here. You're gonna do you're gonna kind of break this there's a membrane here you're gonna kind of break it and then you're gonna put your hand up along the the, uh, the breastbone of the chicken here and I'm just scooping in and pulling everything towards me set that aside um, I'm gonna come back here this is the little oil gland um, you know I've heard that it tastes bad um, I've never noticed any taste in it. I, we've left them on before. 
but um, you know, for others sakes, I just go ahead and take it off. Um, and this will, during the final clean here, we will clean that, that stuff up. Um, so at this point, some people have a, um, a lung puller. I, I don't mind personally leaving lungs in. And for most of the time when I bought them at the store, um, I've, I've found lungs in them as well. I, they just cook and kind of turn brown, you know, they're, if anything, it probably adds a little iron to the diet. Uh, but you can take the lung out by hand as well. Um, it, they, they really come out pretty easy. They're pretty soft. And that guy is ready now for the final clean. Audrey, would you like to do the final clean? Uh, before I do that, let me... Oh, we also do keep the hearts as well. Uh, let me show you how to keep the heart. You just pull the heart off there, and that's going to go in the ice water. Uh, the liver, you want to watch for the bile sac. This green little sac here is the bile sac. If you break that open, your entire chicken is going to be ruined if you pop it while you're pulling it out. Generally, you don't, but if you grab them wrong, you can. Um, and also, if, if you break it at this point, your liver is no good either. So what I kind of do is I kind of just pull everything down off of the liver, and then I pinch. And obviously, it attaches into the liver. So you have to kind of pinch it up here while you pull away. And it, it comes off fairly easy. Liver goes into the ice water. Here's the gizzard. Um, and we just kind of cut the intestine off of it there. Um, and if you want to keep those, what you do is you just kind of cut along the side here into it. Make a little cut. Let me see. A little one. Here it is. They're a little bit empty because we haven't had them on feed. And it opens up like this. That's where they store all their little rocks for digestion. And you'll see they've got little... Well, those look like BB guns from my boys at BB guns. Um, they'll also eat those. Uh, but generally, there's little rocks in here. Or oyster shell. And you can just peel this membrane off really easy. And it cleans up really nice. So, if you want to save those, that's how you would do it. Um, some people use them to make stock with or broth. There's so many parts to the chicken that you can use. You can get overwhelmed with the amount of food that you can make with one chicken, um, you know, when you when you actually process it. Uh, some people save chicken feet, which I've done before. Uh, it makes a really rich collagen broth um, uh, to use those as well. So uh, this is another process that we'll show you another time how to make, make the, the foot broth. And that's pretty much it for this, this part. better but you kind of have to learn not to make it a rush well I don't like to make it rush you know that's what I've dedicated this day for so. 
want to take the camera from Audrey and let Audrey do the clean off. And you need lots of water when you're butchering. Take lots of water. right here is I'm just picking all the um, extra feathers out that didn't get um, that the plucker didn't grab and I'm just doing the this is the finishing touches on it and then um, I think after this we're gonna have to try to get the littlest feathers that we can't really get out
already. And some of these, if you just can't get, you can always come back with a um, little torch and just torch the little pin feathers. Um, just do it quickly so you don't scorch the skin. Um, but once you're done, let's see. Joss, can you hand me that water real quick? Yeah. Give this a little final rinse and get that get these things chilling down you want to get them to chill down as quick as possible um, and kind of any hunters out there know you know put your deer or whatnot on ice and um, it'll help draw out as well All right, guys, um, now that we've gone through the different steps, we're going to get to the rest of these. Um, like we said before, anybody that um, is raising some out or you're looking to raise some out and you just don't feel confident um, in doing it yourself for the first time or whatnot, hey, give us a shout. Um, send me a PM. Um, hit us up in the comments. Uh, and let's get in contact whether you're coming out or whether you're raising enough that even that possibly we bring our equipment over to you and help you do it over at your place, um, that we could definitely work together to, to teach each other new things, uh, to grow our skill sets and to, uh, just make sure that our families are provided for. Hey, we just think, want to thank everybody for, uh, following us on this. And, uh, if this is something that you find, uh, that's beneficial to you, I know my wife, uh, Kelly is going to start doing, uh, videos each day, kind of going over some of the priorities, uh, that we have on the, on the farm and ranch, um, that she's, she's taking care of, or the children are hitting, or we're getting taken care of as a family. Uh, each day is different and each day brings its own challenges. So, um, thanks again. And, uh, we'll be in touch.